Hello, witches, seekers, and the curious. I'm Stacy. Welcome to Enigmatic Witchcraft, where we share down-to-earth opinions on Wicca and witchcraft. Today, we're going to be talking about shadow work. Before we get started, we do feel compelled to give a little bit of a disclaimer, being that, in case you weren't aware, shadow work is really more on the psychological side of things. We are not mental health professionals. If you are someone who has childhood trauma or think that you might have childhood trauma, do not attempt shadow work without being under the care of a mental health professional like a therapist, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, someone in the mental health field. You would risk re-traumatizing yourself, your system, or really just having a really bad time of things if you dredge up repressed memories or something that you're just not ready to deal with yet. Also, I want to address a note on what TikTok advertises as shadow work. By the gods, folks. Do not ever try to relive, recreate the most traumatizing or worst experience that you ever had in your life. That is not safe and really is not what shadow work is about. That's work to do in psychotherapy, again, under the care of a mental health professional. Witchcraft is really about your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being all wrapped up into one, thus the practice part. But that doesn't mean that you should go about certain things like the mental side without the appropriate help from a support system. So again, in case I haven't been super clear on this, shadow work is more of a psychotherapy theory. In fact, it was one of Carl Jung's and it's not actually a witchcraft construct or theory. Okay, wait, that isn't entirely true. There are many indigenous practices that could be considered shadow work. And anytime you approach witchcraft from the empowerment perspective, there will always be some aspects and rituals that lend themselves to reclaiming your personal power, often from the reactionary sort of programming that comes from trauma. Things that help you make peace with the darker, meaning more hidden, parts of the personality or states of being, and integrating, and by that I mean empowering them back into your everyday life in a constructive and meaningful way. There's always things in witchcraft that can help you for, with that. That's totally witchcraft and shamanism and has been done long before Young was ever born or even thought of. As I've mentioned in my Astral Temple video, psychology is part of a broader triple self, mind, body, spirit. Mind being the psychological part, and it plays a big, at least one third, of a role in, in a successful witchcraft practice. And as witches on the internet, using the internet, as we clearly do. Shadow work is most likely to be thrown in your face often the closer we get to Halloween or spooky season. It'll just be there, out there, all the time, in your face. Something you have to do. Shadow work, shadow work, shadow work. So likely you're going to be seeing it more. So let's just talk about it from the enigmatic perspective. Okay, so in case you didn't know, we live with dissociative identity disorder. So lots of spooky shadows exist within our system, within our psychology. So when we're doing shadow work, we really tend to focus on particular triggers. And we are under the care of a psychologist. The points in our life where we haven't been under the care of a mental health professional, and we tried any type of shadow work, it was not a good time. It didn't go well. So we don't recommend doing it. Even for things that seem lighter, less traumatizing types of triggers. The thing is, for anyone with any type of traumagenic disorder, 
or condition. You really can't predict how big something is under the surface. It might look innocent and trivial and it might end up being this huge thing that you did not expect to uh, learn about. So before we go any further, before we embark more on this topic, I feel compelled to address all of the perfectionists out there. Yeah, you. You know who I'm talking about. You know who you are. Shadow work demands patience, grace, the willingness to accept that this is a process and it's not going to be fast and it doesn't need to be fast. And it's a process that will absolutely be fraught with mistakes, with missteps, period. For those protectors out there, this work gets uncomfortable at times. And for God's sakes, of course it's going to get dark. It's called shadow work. It's literally in the name. It's not light work. So do your best to look at the big picture and let your light cast the shadow, not burn it to the ground. To the persecutors, we need you now more than ever with this kind of work. This is your jam, baby. If you can just find a way to tone it down just a little bit, take off the edge just a bit, you'll be heard. Okay, so back to the shadow work. Step one, and this is important for anyone, those with traumatic childhoods and those without. For any witch, any person that's curious, any seeker, focus on your positive traits first. I did this wonderful exercise several months ago, um, well, probably almost five months ago now, um, and I did it while uh, as part of um, getting to know and work with Hecate, and it is. There's a wonderful exercise where I created this jar and then I went in on a nature walk and I collected dry leaves and brought them back and then I wrote on each of the leaves something that I really liked about my system and myself. Um, a skill, a way of thinking, something that I loved about myself, our system, as a whole, our accomplishments, things that we're particularly proud of. So all positive good stuff. One thing per leaf and I put it in this jar and we filled up the jar so that when things get difficult or we're having a tough time we can go back to that jar and pick out a leaf and these are things that uh, should help us claw ourselves back out of any dark holes that we may fall into. And it has worked. It's like a safety net. If you can't do this, then you're not ready to do shadow work. You're just not. I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you think you've had any trauma or not in your childhood. If you cannot do this step, create the safety net for yourself. You should not be doing shadow work. And for people like us, that have any sort of dissociative disorder or a psychotic disorder, we can be very good at embracing the shadow to a certain degree. The secret is to be able to find the balance. So you need to be able to have the safety net of things to feel good about yourself for self-care. Because the embrace of shadow without the illumination of light can swallow you. So just don't. The goal here is to first gain the ability to diffuse a trigger. Um, and everybody has triggers. I don't care who you are or what you struggle with. There's definitely triggers, things that you can work on, um, things that you react to rather than taking time to respond to in your interactions with others 
or uh, with activities and that sort of thing. So this is a process. When you find yourself triggered, whenever you come, whenever you come to the realization, no matter how far you into you are into the the situation, but when you realize I am triggered and I might not be looking at this from an unbiased perspective, just acknowledge it and take a time out. And this sounds easy. It's really, really hard for everyone. Name the trigger. Like, what was it that triggered you? Was it a word? Was it an emotion that you thought that you saw in another person? Was it an action? Was it a movement? Name the trigger. And then try to label the emotion that it provoked. This is really, really hard. It's really hard. So how do you go about doing this? Practice and patience, for sure. Wait, hold up. I had every intention of writing this wonderful program step-by-step step for people to go through for shadow work. And I still intend on doing this. Y'all, to be completely honest, I'm not there yet. I'm still doing my own shadow work. My own approach to this type of shadow work has been honestly really, really slow. It's, it's been slow going, it's been organic, it's been messy. I want to be able to tell you that we are fantastically studious and dedicated to journaling and meditating and tracking and tracing all of our triggers until we've conquered them completely. I really want to be able to tell you that. We're not there. And I can't honestly say those things. Here's where we are. I have this wonderful book. It's not a big book. It's a workbook on shadow work. And this is how I plan to get really organized. Now, we have been doing shadow work for quite a while. But like I said, it's been in a very disorganized way. It's been very organic and it's been very messy. And it's been a lot about learning ways for each of us um, and for neurotypical folks. I would imagine it's also going to be about learning what works best for the types of categories that your triggers fall into whether they're things like that mostly happen at work or mostly happen at home. And for systems, for DID systems, each altar might have a different approach that works better for them. So like I said, it's going to take time and patience. And the biggest thing is just to be able to realize a trigger when it happens and kind of diffuse it and stop it in its tracks and then take the time to calm down to a point where you can look at it objectively. And that is really hard. It's really hard to do. So we have taken, I want to say we've been working on this for the last three years and we're just now at a point where I feel like it's becoming a lot easier to recognize and acknowledge when we're triggered. It still sometimes is really difficult without help of people around us that we trust to figure out well, what was it exactly that triggered us? And then to actually attach an emotion that we felt during that time. For some of us, we still can't do that. So this is a process and it takes a lot of time. And really, like I said, that first step is to be able to acknowledge and point out things that you love about yourself. And, and then to be able to recognize the triggers when they happen. So if shadow work is really honestly something that you feel like you're ready for and you wanna do, I suggest getting a book um, to understand more about it. And you can get a workbook like this. This is a great workbook, um, in my opinion, for both um, dissociative folks and those who are not. Um, it will, it's great for, for both. And it really has great information in here about what shadow work is and how to approach it. And it's gonna tell you too, that you know this should really be done under the care 
of a mental health professional um, for folks who may have any type of trauma traumatic childhoods. And for folks that don't, it might bring things up that you weren't expecting, um, so don't be afraid to uh, get some help and support in this work. So I know this video probably wasn't exactly what folks were uh, hoping that it would be, kind of like a step-by-step -step way of approaching shadow work, like my candle magic video is, um, or even my wards video. So I normally do walk folks through step-by-step um, -step how to recreate um, the things that I talk about. And I guess at the end of the day, I have talked about how to recreate where I'm at with my shadow work. Um, and that's, uh, that's where, that's where we're at. So I hope this was helpful. I hoped it helped at least explain a little bit about what shadow work is and isn't. Brightest blessings and darkest dreams. This is Stacy. Hope to talk to you soon. Bye.